Hey everyone, this is the first of two behind the scenes videos for my latest stop motion animation, Anua vs. Liwa. In this video, I'll talk about the animation and set building process, and in the second part, I'll talk about the visual effects and how I made the music. I've been overwhelmed by everyone's support and positivity on my last video, and so I just wanted to make these to hopefully share some tips and tricks that you might find helpful. Check the description for time codes and links to other videos, and I'm happy to talk in the comments if you have questions or just want to share your own work. All right, so with that, let's get started by talking about how to make a really simple forest set. After taking a bit of a break from the channel due to college, I finally had some free time, and I decided that I wanted to recreate this scene from the comics where Onua fights Liwa. But that meant that I needed to recreate the surrounding forests. And so this is the super easy, quick, and cheap way to make a forest set and it's kind of inspired by Brotherhood Studios and some other animators. So first, you can start by making the ground just by spreading some clay over sheets of foam board. Clay works really well as a base in stop motion because the character's feet will stick to it, making a rock solid connection. Much easier to work with than a normal slippery table. Then adding things on top of the clay like dirt, rocks, and small plants kind of makes it look a little more realistic. Now with the ground done, let's put in some trees. One way to get trees for the set is to, well, go up to a tree and chop off some branches. Then you can just stick these into the foam board ground, and that's a tree. The more structure you have, the better. Sometimes my set just kind of looked like a pile of leaves, so the more tree trunks you have and more organization, usually the more it'll look like an actual forest. Using actual leaves and branches from a tree costs nothing and looks amazing. But after a few hours under hot lights, the leaves can start to dry out, and so after a few days, you might have to replace them. Artificial leaves, on the other hand, don't suffer from this problem, and on camera they look just as good as the real ones. Can you tell which leaves are real and which ones are fake in this scene? The only downside is they cost a bit of money, so I used mostly real leaves. I ended up having to rebuild the set about five times, but in the end, I was really happy with how it looked, and it cost basically nothing to make. Oh, and I'll get into this more in the next video, but I'd recommend using a printed backdrop rather than trying to blue screen the leaves. Trust me, it's a bit of a pain. And that's it! The best thing about a forest is that chaos looks great. Don't be afraid just to try random things out, chances are it'll look pretty good. And if you do make your own set, let me know in the comments. Of course, I am by no means a professional. So if you want to take it to the next level, you can look up miniature makers and artists who, unlike me, actually know what they're doing. Now with the set built, next up is the lighting. Here's a quick tip. Trees look really great when backlit. The leaves glow green because they're translucent, and you get this wonderful shiny rim light. As a comparison, here's what leaves look like when lit from the front. Not nearly as interesting. I got some nice backlighting by placing a strong work lamp behind the trees, kind of mimicking a sun low in the sky. If you're doing this, it also can be helpful to add some desk lamps to help fill in the shadows so they aren't too harsh. This backlighting also added a nice rim light to the characters. Okay, so now with the set, lighting, and also a rough list of things I wanted to film, I was ready to start animating. I animated this video using Dragon Frame and a DSLR, but these days you can make professional videos just using a phone and an app like Stop Motion Studio. The main feature you want is to be able to play back your progress as you animate. It really helps a lot. I've linked a few really good tutorials for getting started in the description. Animating this video presented a few challenges, one of which was the articulation of the characters. Despite what the official animations from LEGO might lead you to believe, the Toa Mata don't have poseable knees or elbows. However, you can add a little bit of articulation using lightsaber pieces where the legs attach to the body. You can also replace the gear function with friction pins and add a bit of articulation to the head by attaching it with another cut lightsaber piece or with a bit of clay. Even with these modifications though, it's still pretty awkward running without knees. So for a lot of the shots that involve running or walking, I kinda cheated and just showed only half their body at a time. For jumping and landing, I tried to use the arms to provide some sense of anticipation and weight, as there was no way for the legs to bend to absorb the impact. And as usual, I used plenty of these inexpensive helping hands to hold up the characters while they were walking or flying through the air. Of course, they have to be then digitally removed afterwards, but that'll be a topic for the next video. Oh, and the clay floor that I built earlier ended up working really well for the newest attacks. Although it started to melt a little bit under the lights, 
So I had to add a bit of Lego for reinforcement. Looks kind of like a Lego chocolate bar. In the end, I still felt like the animation came out a bit stiff and the impacts could have hit a bit harder, but having fewer joints made it a little bit easier to concentrate on getting fine movements smooth. And as talented animators like Kevin Perry demonstrate, you can add life to pretty much anything, regardless of how much articulation it has. One more quick tip is filming things in reverse. When Leo puts his mask back on, I just couldn't get it to line up properly with his face. So instead, I started with the mask on already and had him take it off, and then played it all in reverse. This way, it looks like he's putting the mask on and it all lines up perfectly. This kind of trick is super useful in stop motion because no one will be able to tell the difference. And finally, let's talk about camera movement. To give the animation a bit more energy, I really tried to keep the camera moving as much as possible. You can do this pretty easily after filming with a digital pan, or during filming just by manually moving the camera or set a little bit each frame. For some shots, I just used a simple cart made out of Lego that I could move in tiny increments each frame. But I wanted to learn some new skills, so I also put together a camera robot using Arduino that connects directly with Dragonframe. As an engineer, I had a lot of fun building and using this camera robot and trying out new kinds of shots with different camera moves. That being said, moving the camera manually or digitally is often the easier method in most situations. In the future, I'm planning to build on the things I learned with this video to do even more with camera movement. Version 2.0 is already in the works. Also, for the first time, I was able to rack focus, which is changing the focus dynamically throughout a shot. To do this, you just need to be able to change the focus a little bit each frame. I ended up figuring out a way to do this in Dragon Frame, but you can also do this easily on webcams or just manually if you're careful enough. The whole animation process took about a month and was filled with all the normal setbacks you get, like appearing on reflective parts of the characters or having things fall over. And nothing ever goes exactly according to plan. As I was assembling the first cut of the footage, I realized the story just wasn't coming across that clearly, and so I needed to go back and film a couple more shots, which would help communicate the story better. Maybe I should just have my characters talk next time. But in the end, after animating and burning through many hours of podcasts, it was all filmed. But there was still plenty of work left to do. Blue screen, rig removal, sound, and music. So in the next video, I'll go over all that stuff and more. I'm happy to respond to comments if you have questions, or if you just want to share what you make. I love seeing the amazing work done by this community. Thanks so much for watching and for sticking with me over all these years. Oh, and don't forget, wear a mask.